So welcome back for today's class. Today we are going to take the next part of cognitive uh, method. Uh, we will start with, uh, we discuss the general analysis method. Now from today onwards we will start the cognitive task analysis method. Okay? So, we have different uh, method and we will discuss few of them over here. So, let us understand what is cognitive task analysis method. So, these methods are used for describing the knowledge and strategies which is required for understanding the task performance. So, here uh, in the whole cognitive task analysis method, whatever we were going to discuss, here the point is task performance which is very, very important. Whenever we are talking about task, we need to understand first what is task. So, in a whole job, we, we should have these definitions ready. We should identify the task that we are going to analyze for our uh, this particular study and then we can take up any one of the method as per requirement and we can go ahead. So, if we talk about cognitive task analysis methods, we should understand what is task, task, what is the kind of performance we are looking for, what is initial point of this task and this ending point of this task. So, input and output which is very, very important whenever we are talking about this type of uh, uh, no methods. Cognitive task analysis has implications for development of various expert system, training and instructional design, experts decision making and policy making. Be, see why all these? So, whenever we are talking about task performance, a person who is performing a particular task, so kind of job demand is there, kind of requirements are there and what is the performance level, what is the competency level. If we understand all these, then only it is possible for the designer, possible for the in, uh, the person who is doing the intervention to optimize the whole system. And once we try to do the optimization, there all this decision making, policy making will come into existence and of course, new design, new design will come into existence. Okay? So, whenever we are talking about cognitive task analysis, understanding the task performance, at the end definitely we, what will happen using the output, using the interpretation of all these data, what we are going to do, we will understand where the lacuna is available in this particular system and where the intervention point can come, how the intervention can help to enhance the performance or productivity of the whole system. So, whenever we are talking about this type of these types of analysis, we need to understand what is the system goal. Okay. So, in our earlier uh, MOOCs course, we definitely discussed what is system, how the system function, what are the components of system. So, whenever we are talking about task analysis, of course, that system understanding need to be there. So, for more understanding about the system, you can refer the earlier MOOCs course that is ergonomics workplace analysis. So, at global cognition level, uh, uh, glo cognition, cognitive task analysis methods are also applied to design the human computer interaction. Here, human computer interaction does not mean only the literal computer, okay. So, it is not that only uh, desktop, hard, uh, laptop, or something like that, no. So, any system where the machine is present, how the interactions are happening, so that is going to be discussed or going to be analyzed in this particular cognitive task or uh, no analysis method. So, let us understand uh, what are the broad phases available, typically 5. So, what first is background preparation, then is elicitation of the knowledge, then qualitative data analysis, knowledge representation and design and develop that particular applications. 
So, let us go one by one. So, when we talk about background preparation, what exactly it says? It says getting familiar with the domain and population of interest. So, when we are talking about task analysis, before we choose a method, okay, there are several methods, right, on in, in cognitive task analysis. When, before we go for a particular method, what we need to understand? We need to understand what performance or what exactly we are going to study. So, we have to be familiar with that particular area. Also, the people who are in who are actually involved in that particular job in that particular task we need to understand them very carefully so population characteristics so the age the uh, socio economic uh, no, uh, no status educational status behavioral uh, understanding how they behave with each other peer interaction so depending on the type of task that you are going to analyze we should understand the population very very carefully so before we select our sample we should understand the population characteristics we should fix them very carefully so uh, whenever we are talking about population of course next stage is your sample right so before we select sample we should clear be very clear that what are the inclusion and exclusion criteria for that particular sample so we should fix them before we go ahead with any kind of task analysis so reading through the existing manuals whatever is available doctrine or holding information discussion so that is also possible so whenever we are talking about that particular activity so we of course we should understand what type of uh, task that we are going to analyze we should be very clear that what task I am going to analyze. So, this understanding I am emphasizing over here uh, no repeatedly because this part only we miss sometime ok. Before we just choose a task analysis method and we start working and once we get the data we realize ok this is not possible like or maybe the data is not correct there are many difficulties in the you know uh, in the analysis stage this only happen when we miss to understand the task at the initial level next is elicitation of knowledge so using one or more specific techniques to draw out the tacit knowledge and uh, you know thought process of the experts okay so it's very important as we are always talking about human ok whenever we are talking about any anything related to ergonomics human is the main component right. So understanding the tacit knowledge is very very important because many things are not theoretically presented in book or in any journal papers or something whereas very specific tacit knowledge is very important whenever we are trying to understand that particular task background. So clear identification of those tacit knowledge specifically to that particular context is very important. So you uh, know you can take up any one of the earlier uh, method like you know uh, observation or interview or uh, a focus group study and you can uh, take information from there as the source of tacit knowledge. Of course, experts uh, interviews always help you to understand this better. Next is analysis of the qualitative data because whenever we we are in the initial stage we may not have any quantitative data for the such cases so analyzing those qualitative data is very very important so shifting through the mass of data usually in the form of transcript of the experts verbal report we can use uh, content analysis we can use focus group study uh, data and we can of course interview we can use and you can find out what is the exact scenario available in that particular context. It is very, very important. 
नेक्स्ट इज नलेज रिप्रेजेंटेशन सो एसेंबलींग दोज थट व्हाट एवर यू आर रिसिविंग फ्रम योर आर्लियर अबजार्भेशन आर्लियर इंटरव्यू डेटा एलिमेंट्स इन टू अ रेडिली डिजाइन यू नो डायजेस्टेबल फॉर्मेट सो हियर इट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट व्हाट वे यू वॉन्ट टू synthesize them okay so if you if you are uh, expert in that field of course you can derive your own however it is always advised for the new researchers you take help from the seniors you take from the uh, experts to how to derive these data you know okay, how how the communication uh, you know extracting those information how you are going to do that so you take initial at the initial stage take help from them and the creating table chart or diagram whichever is suitable for your particular uh, research and the last step is the design and develop uh, develop that particular application so creating instruction decision aids or other application using the newly constructed model so after uh, after all at the end definitely we are de going to design the a particular model right uh, we are going to construct that model and ultimately from all these information we are going to uh, design it or construct it okay so these are the basic five steps phases basically that we should go um, take up when we are talking about cognitive task analysis methods now we are going to discuss few of them not all there are many uh, varieties available however which are the broadly used methods that we are going to discuss <laughs> so mainly we are talking about hierarchical task hierarchical task analysis because this is a method which is broadly used or majorly used in many domains okay it's not only in the field of design not only in the field of industrial engineering in many uh, no uh, uh, subject in many uh, stream this particular method has been used for years and years okay then next is allocation of function methodology and then critical decision method so these three we will be discussing separately so let us start with hierarchical task analysis in short we call it as hta by nomenclature itself you understand how it will look like what we are going to get from it so hierarchy means we are developing an hierarchy based on the task that we are going to perform the worker is going to perform now these i already mentioned in earlier classes that input can come from observation mainly from the observational data so whenever we are observing a particular task observing a particular uh, job in the uh, workstation or workplace you can take a video recording you can uh, get the observational data and you can uh, give that as an input for the hierarchical task analysis so let us understand it in detail so hta was first developed to the need to analyze complex task of course simple task it's very easy to, for us to understand we can have a simple flow chart and we can understand the time taken or movements uh, involved into it and we can understand where the interventions are required however in complex task where uh, two three components are connected with each other as a complex system do you remember that uh, the systems you know uh, man machine system where we are talking about simple system and complex system i'll just give one more revision simple system means where one man one machine and within a single environment they are interacting with each other so there is no complexity whereas if any one of the component any one of the component of the man machine system changes like you know two man or three man or uh, three uh, machine or four machine so if there is a change in the number of the man or machine then it becomes complex in nature so one component uh, the input from the output from the one component can act as the input of the other component and then it becomes an information flow and it creates a network okay so when 
we have such kind of we have such kind of complex system in place then only we need this type of analysis to understand which one is coming prior how the impact is flowing from one to other and how where the interaction points are and which interaction point is causing the problem or which interaction point is having more gravity right so whenever we are talking about hierarchical task analysis analysis we should remember it's a complex system okay example um, initial uh, days it started with the chemical processing unit power generation industry for all these cases we used to go for the hierarchical task analysis later nowadays we are using it for many many fields so complex tasks are decomposed into uh, a hierarchy of operation and sub operation with few aims first normally what we try to do is identify those are likely to fail due to poor design or lack of expertise so here two major <laughs> identifications are important one is poor design okay poor design and lack of expertise so when we are talking about poor design if we can really identify this poor design what we can have we can have direct uh, indication that if we can improve that component improve that particular design of course my whole performance will go up whereas when we are talking about lack of expertise what we need to do we need to have some kind of training program in, uh, no information and uh, better system design so that there is less dependency on the experience length dependency on the expertise so it, it, then it becomes more easy for a new person to adapt the situation okay this is one and second is the pro, no you, you we are going to propose the solution that might involve redesigning the task or providing special training so it's connected with each other right so that is very very important so whenever we are talking about hierarchical task analysis one very important thing that we need to understand we need to first understand what is the hierarchy present in that particular task okay and how do we do that we are going to explain it whenever we are talking about hierarchical task analysis we should understand few uh, terminology first is input <laughs> we are talking this particular input many times so operations are specified by the condition under which the goal becomes active so that we will call as input okay second is action okay that means by which the goal is attained so you are doing some job okay it's very easy to understand basically then second third is feedback so the indication of goal attainment so whenever you are doing performing an action what will happen there is be a result and how you are receiving that information back so contact between the end and the person who is operating it so that kind of information okay and of course the plan so operations can be decomposed into constituent sub operations grouped together okay that plan is very very important so these four major terminology we should understand before we go ahead with the procedure of the hierarchical task analysis if we talk about plan there are four major types apart from that we can have some more however these are the four major types that we normally practice okay so first one is routine procedure then second is a conditional sequence time shared procedure and unordered which is not really in sequence such, such kind of procedures so let us understand one by one first is routine procedure 
So what it is? A simple sequence of operation. So suppose I am talking about taking a class in a classroom. Simple process if we look at students arrive at class, teacher go to the class, pick up a particular topic, use blackboard, chalk and start taking the class. Now this is very broad divisions, right? However, it is a very complex system if we go into detail like you know how students are arriving, how teacher is arriving at class, how they pick up the uh, every portion can go into more detail. Okay. So, and each can have a simple sequence of it. So, this is called the routine procedure. So, when we are talking about understanding the sequence of operations, so step by step, 1, 2, 3, 4, something like that. Okay. The next is a conditional sequence where we are imposing some condition. So, involving a particular decision. So, if we go back to the previous example like teacher coming to the class and taking a particular class. Now, if I am supposed to take a presentation and uh, perf uh, no, going ahead with the class, in that case condition is if laptop is present in function, if projector is present in function. So, these are all the conditions we need to have. Okay, sufficient illumination is there or not. So, all these are condition. Then third is time shared procedure. So, what it is? Two goals must be attained at the same time. So, now when I am talking about, let us go back again to the same example. Two particular goal, maybe we can set in that particular class. So, in that what will happen? In a same class, two separate goal has to uh, uh, no has to come out like the result has to uh, reflect okay so then it is time shared procedure so simultaneously it will go ahead so read understanding and then writing or performing a particular uh, job or something like that okay an unordered procedure all sub goals must be <laughs> attained but orders is not at all important okay so maybe we can take up some you know some uh, some product making or something where we know this product need to be made and there are sub components of those pro that particular product i am not concerned that which part to be prepared first, second or third. However, I am only concerned the whole product should be ready, whole product should be ready as per the requirement. Okay. So, that is the unordered procedure, there is no order is following. So, maybe just exam for example, the whole product may have three components, Okay, component 1, component 2, component 3. So, I am not uh, worried about that component 3 is prepared first or component 1 is prepared. At the end, whenever the component 1, 2 and 3 are ready, then only I am going to get my whole product. However, I am not really interested to understand or know that first is component 1, 2 or 3. So, there is no order. Okay, So, that is unordered procedure. So, these are the four main types that we can have in the plan section. Little more about this hierarchical task analysis. So, operations can be composed or to whatever level of the details is required by the purpose of analysis. So, depending on the result that I am looking for. So, objective, objective of my study, depending on that decomposition is possible. So, you may decide at what level you want the decomposition. Okay, we will we'll come about the procedure of decomposition definitely. So, this decomposition depends on the, the, the objectives of the research. Okay. General rule is to stop when the probability of failure of an operation times the cost of failure is acceptable. So, at that point we may <coughs> stop our decomposition. 
Hierarchical task analysis has been widely used in the process control and power generation industry and in military application that we already mentioned. It has been adapted for use in most human factors and human computer interaction application including training, designing, error and risk analysis and the identification and assessment of the team skill. Okay. So, how we are going to do that all we are going to discuss later. So, if we go for the detailed procedure in short it has these many steps each steps we are going to discuss. So, first let us read out what are the steps one by one. So, decide on the purpose of the analysis which is very important if you are not clear about the purpose of the analysis we will not be able to un, uh, know select that particular task. So, when, only, when we know when we understand at the end what I am looking for so visualizing that is very very important. Then determine the task goal and performance criteria. Third identify the source of task information here it is very important this task information ok. So, if we do not understand the what is the task information is available then it becomes very difficult that you know to, to decompose those tasks further. So, identifying the sources of task information is very very important issue over here. Fourth is acquire data and draft a decomposition table that we are going to perform. Here it takes lot of time. You really need be very patient enough to uh, draw that particular diagram and it may happen you draw a particular decomposition diagram and later you found one more steps to be uh, incorporated. Again, again you have to uh, redraw that. So, this is little tedious job. Uh, recheck the validity of the decomposition with the stakeholder. So, it may happen that you decomposed it and later you take to the stakeholders and they inform ok there is this step is missing or this decomposition is not correct steps are little different then again you can uh, rewrite that particular table. So, here it is a no feedback mechanism the information can come from here and after getting uh, the feedback you can again redo the task uh, you can redo the table. Once the table is ready identify the significant operation in the light of purpose of analysis. So, wherever whatever is your the objectives are based on that you, you identify the significant operations. According to the identification only you can go ahead and then generate and the test the hypothetical solution to the performance problem and identify it that particular like uh, how you are going to take it further. So, once whatever the problems are identified you then you take it for the further analysis ok. So, let us detail it out in uh, for each step. So, first is the decide on the purpose of analysis. In the very first step what you do it is need to address the original question. Now, how this original question comes? So, whenever we are looking at a particular task, looking at a particular job and we understand ok fine hierarchical task analysis need to be performed. We try to understand at the end of hierarchical task analysis what is the possible outcome where I will land. So, based on that question first original uh, first question we need to identify that particular task such as modified equipment design or operating procedure a recommended training syllabus or a training medium many case many thing is possible ok. Simply if you want to design a particular tool what you will do you will take it 
like what are the steps to be followed to use that particular tool. In that case also you can have this. So, describe that particular purpose and you match it how you are going to do it. So, decide the purpose of that analysis. Second, the determine the task goal and performance criteria. Let us first read out what is there. So, the owner of the task here it is very important who is going to perform it and the stakeholders. Okay. Stakeholders of that whole task should agree on the goals and the organizational value and the output desired. First, they should come into a particular point. Okay, this is going to happen. So, if there are differences, then looking at the task, the perspectives will change, right? So, before we start the whole procedure, we should be in a same platform. So, they should agree on the objective of the performance criteria and this step may require close questioning and negotiation between the stakeholders. So, we should be clear when we all stakeholders and the performance should be there in the on the same platform. There will be no differences in their opinion about that particular task. If differences of opinion are present, then it may happen there will be a biasness, there will be missing of data and there will be many uh, like wrong uh, interpretation of the data will happen. So, everybody should be there on the same understanding about the goal about the particular task. So, identify the source of task information. So, as I mentioned, <coughs> so here identifying that uh, you know input source is very very important. So, this step includes the documentation such as drawings, manuals for maintenance and operation of uh, procedure, experts opinion from the designer, managers instruction and the, the op instructors and the operators and the records of the plant and operator performance. So, whatever informations are available regarding that particular task. So, whatever the sources are there, you are going to use it, you should identify them beforehand. Okay. So, once the task is ready to analyze, then you find out what are the sources available. Then direct observation is helpful for initial orientation and for checking the opinion. Fourth step that acquire data and draft the decomposition table diagram as I mentioned, it is a very tedious job. You should be very much careful when you do it. Basically, what we try to do, it is not that one particular person do this. We, we can have three, four members of the team and they do it separately and they match with each other and then they go back to the stakeholders. Then it becomes very detailed, very precise and there will be less chance of error. So, what exactly it does? It is usually, it starts usually with the you know, top level goals asking in turn how each sub goals are attained. Okay. First is big, small, 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 small like that they will der uh, derive it. Okay. So, the decomposition table or diagram should reveal the overall structure of the task including significant plan. Okay, whatever specific significant plans are involved in the whole task that has to be incorporated in this diagram. So, long procedures, critical decision rule, you know if there are dual tasks to be performed, everything has to be there very critically present and detailing. Okay, detailing is very, very important. So, decomposing them at the minimum level that is very important over here. So, it is a very critical portion and which you should do again and again so that you can arrive at better data, better decomposed table. So, 
once you derive it so as I mentioned that you know you can do it for uh, two members or three members team uh, so each member will have separate then you combine them if there is no major differences you can take anyone or if there are differences you would rediscuss and finally formulate your decomposition table <laughs> once it is there then you go back to the stakeholder and check them okay so rechecking is very important once you recheck then what will happen the stakeholders or maybe the operator himself or herself okay so they will have better understanding about that particular idea and they will clarify the process is whatever you have prepared is exactly the way they are doing it or not or there are some changes there are some changes is required or not okay so that they will uh, mention or they will clarify it okay so that is very important once you get the clarification you can redo your decomposition table then is your actual analysis so identify the significant operation in the light of purpose of the analysis so how do you do that so operations can be decomposed to whatever level of detail is required by the purpose of analysis so at what level you can fix it off the general rule is to stop when probability of a failure of an operation time the cost of failure is acceptable okay so probability and the cost of failure so this this if it is at the level of acceptance you you do at that level only after that if it is not acceptable you don't go it further okay so the reasons for failure may be obvious upon inspection of the details of the operation and it is helpful to consider failures related to input to action and plans and to the feedback so this feedback is very essential to correct the performance and which may suffer the problems of any other type of you know, perceptual input but may be especially disruptive if the subject the operator wants to delay it. So, this is very very essential part how do you understand these feedbacks which is present in the whole decomposition table. So, all these information you can gather if you follow these steps and then you can have your own data set ready for further analysis probably we take this for the statistical treatment or um, maybe uh, descriptive statistics okay next is you know you you generate and they test the hypothetical solution to the performance problems which is being identified in that particular analysis so what are the steps that we can do so identifying the likely sources of unsatisfactory performance it's very important here all these are you know decisions so what you have to do you have to identify the sources of unsatisfaction so in the whole hierarchical uh, table it may happen there are four you know unsatisfactory performance now why these unsatisfactory so cause root analysis root cause analysis okay so you have to really go back and check that why these satisfactory performances are coming into in this particular stage if we can understand that this is the root cause of this unsatisfactory then what we will do we will start our intervention to that particular root right so this is very very important that you you identify those sources okay of course it will it will give you a possible solution based on the current theory and best practices uh, which is present in the industry so you may refer the information from the literature from the tacit knowledge present in that particular uh, context and whatever the best practices available then you can derive the solution so these may be related to the task design and the equipment and personal use procedures or training and other forms of support depending on the purpose of the analysis which you have already decided at the 
very initial stage of hierarchical task analysis. So, identifying what is your objective is very very important. So, based on that this second step you can achieve. Okay? So, normally what happen the type of solution example now if you want to modify the design of the equipment or you want to construct a training syllabus whatever it is it comes based on the whatever steps uh, no, whatever objective you had decided in the very initial uh, stage okay that is very important however the analyst should not reframe the drawing attention to alternative solution where this may uh, no, offer a particular different advantage. So, it happened that we decided something okay, at the very initial stage. Based on that, we conducted the hierarchical task analysis. Now, we have the decomposition table, we have the data with us. Of course, we have the solution or the objective that we decided uh, in the first step is being achieved. However, once we decomposed that particular table, it, it may happen that all of a sudden some new, new thing is coming up and that is the advantage that we were really unknown before we started this decomposition table, be before we started this hierarchical task analysis. Now, due to <laughs> this table is ready, we have some new idea, new uh, source of information or new intervention point that you can go ahead with you uh, know with, with your next phase. So, of course, first definitely you are going to get the answer what you raised in the first step. Apart from that, there are always a possibility that you can have more uh, no uh, direction for further analysis or more direction for further intervention. So, that that is the critical part and it only happen when you look at the decomposition table very very critically. So, it needs a skill, it needs experience. Of course, uh, the new researchers may not look into that detail. However, when they discuss it with their you know, seniors with the expertise or expert group of people, of course, some new area of intervention can come up from the same decomposition table. Okay, so, it is very very interesting uh, over here. So, let us understand the advantages. Okay. So, as a generic method, HTA is adaptable to a wide range of purpose. So, task can be analyzed to any required level of detail depending on the purpose. So, as I mentioned that you know uh, depending on the objective that you have chosen, what you have to do? You have you, you can decide that at what level you are going to uh, decompose that particular task. So, when you use it correctly, HTA provides an exhaustive analysis of the problem that you are going to address. So, it is it's very, very important and detailed task and the, uh, it, it may start from the observation. Okay? Of course, it has some you know disadvantages. So, it requires uh, the handling by an analyst well trained in a variety of method of data collection and in relevant human factors principle. So, as I mentioned it, it need experience, it needs a skill to you know collect data, analyze the data, looking at the uh, perspective, it is very important. It requires full collaboration of relevant stakeholders. As long you are not connected with the stakeholders, uh, you will not be able to get uh, good data. Okay? So, that is why taking confidence uh, and you no know, par uh, participation of each stakeholders are very, very important. So, if any one of the stakeholder is not really you know connected with that particular study, you, there is always a chance of biased data or you no know, missing data <laughs> that is possible. So, it requires time in proportion to the complexity of the task. As I mentioned, if the task is complex, time is more, right. So, more complexity, 
more time requirement so it's absolutely if you if you have a very very complex task what you need to do normally that we try to do always in your data collection we break them okay we break them in phases we break them as per the requirement and you know uh, once we analyze each component separately then we merge them so uh, that way it you know it becomes little simple or it becomes easy to handle such data so time consumption is really very high when you are talking about you know formulating and analyzing the hierarchical task analysis so let us take some example here we are talking about a anti submarine where uh, where team and we are talking about the skill of them and how we are going to analyze the whole sequence so here in the initial stage though it's a task that is going to be performed and initial stage what we identified over here the purpose that identification of measurement of a team skill okay what we are going to do over here we are trying to measure the team skill critical to the sub successful anti submarine warfare okay so that we are going to do asw okay anti submarine warfare we are going to understand how how successful they are when we are talking about a team skill of a critical um, i know anti submarine warfare so this analysis focuses on operations depending critically on the team interaction so here each team how they are interacting with each, with each other is very very important okay the second once we 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 understand what we are going to do so this is our purpose we are going to understand the performance of that anti submarine warfare team okay so then let us understand that what we are going to do with this okay so determining the task goal and performance criteria so we in, in at the initial stage itself we are going to decide what are the performance criteria to be fulfilled uh, once somebody is uh, uh, the the whole thing is been done the whole performance is done what are the criteria are there on which we are going to evaluate so first we let us decide on that so what they have done in this particular example so when they are going to escort a highly valued unit so maybe a troop ship so safe arrival at the designated time and place and successfully countering all threats which are available at the top level goal okay so this was this so first is safe arrival where at the designated time and place then successfully you have to counteract on the threats whatever threats available while operating okay so these three things they are going to do so based on this they are going to give the performance level so they are going to understand the whole performance based on these criteria so a variety of objective criteria are available including you know geographical location proportion of threats correctly identified within specified time or not defensive uh, attack successfully executed or not so all these can be we need to decide before we start this particular analysis so in this particular stage what we have done not we the the in that this particular example uh, what they have done they have determined these few things one is can they come back can they rescue that troop on a specific time safely at the at the time that they have decided or at the place what have they, they have decided and is it possible for them to counteract successfully counteract all the threats whatever is available in that particular context okay so that they have decided the next step identify the information sources which is very very important because this will help you to understand the decision making this help will understand how the influences are there in critical path choose okay 
chosen part so that that's why understanding the source of information is very important so what they have done over here the primary sources uh, they identified as the senior asw instructor so there will be the supported by manuals specifying the welfare doctrine and standard operating procedure so through sop and through specific welfare doctrine they are going to get these information to the senior asw instructor okay the analyst was also able to observe team operating in a simulator okay so uh, they have really understood how exactly it is going to happen so in a simulated condition they have observed it so when it is in actual they can really understand or connect with the experience which they have received in the simulated condition to make use of electronic record of events occurring in the ex, uh, no in that particular exercise of course video recording were made of team operating in pre arranged scenario in a particular simulator so these are all the sources of information okay so these served as check on the information provided by the expert and also as an example of the data that could be used to measure the team skill so these are all information they identified and they kept it with them for further analysis or further reference then they started with the decomposition diagram okay uh, the questioning of subject matter experts focused on the goals and the failures and especially important questions that were asked that how would you know if x have been correctly carried out or not x means that particular step okay has been carried out or not a small section of analysis is illustrated suppose this is the diagram of course this is taken from a book it's not that we have done it or we have carried out so this way they can create the decomposition table so uh, uh, it starts you know what was the uh, point that they started step 1 is the protect the hvu and which is identified in you uh, know 1 and 2 okay so two is the second component here we are going to detail out the component one and then you can see all the steps are being uh, carried so here what they are saying that each light color rectangle shows how the part of the overall operation is decomposed into sub operation so all these one two here three so all the light color you know you you are going further further down whereas this deep color okay so is shaded rectangle provide the immediate context so each deep color means immediate action so here 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 you can understand these are the immediate actions to be done so what it says it's a just a representation okay it's just a representation for your understanding how you can really derive your uh, you know decomposition table so what it says the plans are indicated in sequence bracket like you know like this type of dots so that you can do and 1 and 2 are indicated as the sub goals of course and which are active simultaneously so uh, section 1 and section 2 okay they are they are going simultaneously and later maybe we can club them and we can have a bigger view or broad view of the whole system you can create this type of you know blocks or a flow diagram or you can go ahead with this type of table it same thing similar thing okay so that you can have and then you here it is very good that you have all the you know uh, verbal description so it it becomes more easy for someone to understand so you can understand what is the plan for this step what is the plan for this step like that you can have more clarity if you are going to analyze this or read this out later okay <laughs> that is possible the uh, no details of our previous table now once 
once you finish that particular step that you know you have drawn the sub uh, identified the goals sub goals and you created that hierarchical um, structure hierarchy structure then you check so what you have achieved over here what you can go you can go back to the um, uh, the experts you can go to the each stakeholder and you can get the uh, uh, the uh, you know validity of this decomposition table so here what they have done at least two interactions of the decompositions were required before the uh, they go to the stakeholder and the analyst were satisfied that this was an accurate representation of the task uh, that they have chosen and the various means of attending them. So, they have really done it well in this particular example. Okay. It is a pub, it is from a publication. So, of course, uh, it is it is already printed. Okay. So, now in the last stage what they have done that identifying the significant operation. So, referring to the step 1 like what is the aim? Aim of this analysis was to identify and measure the team skill right critical to successful team performance that was the objective that was the uh, that is why they started this. So, the depth of the analysis was therefore determined by the lowest level at which various team activities could be associated with critically important team products that way they have achieved it ok. <laughs> so, for example, in this in this particular case let us go back again here. So, what they have done, they what goal they have uh, the what kind of teamwork they have done and the criteria of measures they have identified and they have clearly mentioned it. So, it becomes very easy for the researcher to take up the decision, right? Okay. Now, in the last step, so they what they have done generate and test the hypothetical solution to the performance problem. So, whatever uh, problems they have identified, they have to develop the hypothetical solution of it. So, the analysis identified a number of critical operation in which various type of team interaction could be related to failure to achieve this team goal. So, there are possibilities th that these interaction may create problem and the whole performance the rescue operation may fail right. So, they identified that. So, five types of critical team behavior were identified. So, first was sending information from one source to other source then receiving information. So, one person is sending information from one place to other person and maybe sending is also a problem uh, may be a problem or receiving also may be a problem. There are possibilities that discussion may go into wrong direction. How they they collaborate, how they we act upon there may be some problem and synchronization the whole activity. So, these are the major five areas that they identified after they uh, know derive this particular hierarchical chart. So, the performance of ASW team was observed during a standard exercise and scored as the percentage of satisfactorily executed team operation in each of the five categories. So, these five categories you know uh, send information, receive information, discuss, collaborate and synchronize. So, what they have done? They have categorized them and they have this uh, you know what they have done they have given the percentage of it and then only they decided which one will take first second and third and fourth like that. So, as I mentioned uh, it is not only an individual method it it is connected to many other methods. So, what are these um, maybe Sherpa maybe Musa all these methods are connected. So, what it says that HTA has been used as a basis of the investigation of a variety of problem. So, you know TAFEI, Sherpa, Musa and you know task analysis for knowledge based description these all are related method. So, I will take you uh, to the standard and regulation it does not have have any specific standard measure 
only thing over here is that how you are decomposing that how you are creating the decomposing table is very important to you ok. So, that you need to maintain reliability and validity. So, uh, no reliability depends principally on the care uh, that you have taken in the data collection specifically when you are formulating your uh, table. So, step 5 and step 7 is very very important. So, you should take care of them very uh, critically you should understand it very uh, detail and then only you take the decision that based on those two steps you know your reliability and validity uh, depends. What do you actually need? HTA can be carried out using only pen and paper method but however it is always better you have a video recording so that you can redo the exercise at the latter stage also. Also the observational record you can take up uh, using video and audio ok that is possible. So, in summary we can say HTA is an activity that describe in terms of its specific goal, sub goals, operations and plans. Each step shows what user task and actions are possible. HTA guides to overall design any task in critical situation and also it is used as a checklist for keeping track of a task coverage in the task design. Okay. So, from next day we will go for some other tool till now we discussed this hierarchical task analysis and we will start with the other method in the next class. Thank you. Mm -hmm.